women who have seen things, women with diseases in their livers. There are a lot of women with scars on their arms and words that carry themselves like sparrows. There are women who were too big for this town, who had their backs been carrying things like religion and history. There are a lot of people like me because we're all the same. We're lonely under the gaze of God. We're all wet with dew and swelling hard against do this, consume this, shut up, and be afraid to die. She goes on to talk about the purity of children, that vast openness we have to untainted humanness and how we don't or won't or can't put ourselves in that place of love we give to others. Because as she says, we are slow and tired, round and sagging Ooh. and airy. I'm sagging more than I used to. Then she says, here's the rub, right? I don't want my girls to be children who are perfect. And then, when they start to feel like women, they remember how I thought of myself as ugly. And so they will be ugly too. She says, I set it behind, I see it behind their eyes, that calculating and impression, how glad they are that I believe I am beautiful. They love me. To me, I'm to them, I am love and guidance and warm, soft blankets and early mornings. They have never, ever doubted how wonderful I am. And how confusing it must have been to have me say to them, you think I am beautiful, but you are wrong. You are small. And you love me, so you're not smart enough to know how unattractive I am. I know I am ugly because I see myself with mean eyes. You are my child, and I love you, but I will not allow myself to be pretty for you. Do you see how damaging that is? This way of not just sinking into love of self, it may seem like it hurts us most, but in the end it may be one of the most destructive forces unwittingly passed on to those we love perhaps even more destructive than we can imagine or measure. So friends, I want you to get comfortable in your seat. Put your hands into a bowl shape. And I want you, in your mind, and in our silence together, to put into your bowl all the love you can muster for yourself. Sparkle and sprinkle in some self-worth, shake in some spicy dignity, ladle in the fullness of who you are just for being you. Close your eyes and feel the weight of that bowl increase. Right Mean stars are rising. Bright morning stars are rising. Bright morning stars are rising. Day is a breaking.
Second part, the prayer is about gratitude. All the world's religious traditions speak about having moments of gratitude every day. I have two quotes I've carted around with me for a long time. One is from Alice Walker's book, The Color Purple, where she has one of the characters in the book say, I think it pisses God off if I walk by the color purple in a field somewhere and I don't notice it. The other is by Meister Erkot, the 14th century mystic and early theologian who said, if the only prayer you ever say in your life is thank you for the gift of life, that's enough. Gratitude leads to a full life. Great, full, F-U-L-L. -L. Gratitude leads to a generosity of spirit and practice. Gratitude reminds you when you put positive energy out into the world more often than not, positive energy comes back at you as well. The only prayer you ever say is thank you for the gift of life. That is enough. So I invite you to hold your hands together in any form, in prayer, in consideration, in connection, and in the silence we share together to lift up the gratitudes for your life, big and small, funny and pale, new and redundant. Close your eyes. And list your life's graces, your gratitudes. Sometimes it feels like I'm so far away. Like everything I love is lost. It's by the best of me. I just close my eyes and see. There's fireflies dancing in the yard under a blanket of stars. Sound of the rusty string guitar playing songs we know. And all that I And all that I have to do is think one little thought of you, and I'm back home. I'm right back home. I'm back home. I'm right back. Part of this is acceptance, your hand back to a bowl. Just a reminder that each day we get blessing and curse, life is bittersweet. There's a rare time that life comes to you with moments of unadulterated joy that isn't tempered by some sorrow, some sadness, some grief, and yet our work is to practice, to accept there is an ancient story that I love about this woman who was just so angry all the time and depressed. And she knew that if she drank out of the river Styx, she would be cured of all of that. Her depression and anger would go away. 
So she walks to the river Styx, and there he is the ferryman who will carry her to the other side where she can drink of the water. And she says to him, Will I let go of all my depression and anger? And he says, You will. But you also will lose all the memory of those happy, joyous times as well. She says, will I forget all the people who hated me? And he says, you will. But you will also forget all the people who loved you fiercely and quietly without you ever even knowing. She stood there for a while and thought about whether or not to cross. And she turned around and walked home. There's a Jewish proverb that says, when life isn't the way you like it, like it the way it is. You can't be avoided, you can't be welcome. Scott once did this wonderful sermon. And in the end, his whole message to it is want what you have. It's a good thing to be reminded of. I'd like you to close your eyes and put into that bowl all your frustrations and crabbiness and your laughter and your cheer. Put them into the bowl and be one with the bittersweetness of life. Help me to find Oh, Lord, some peace of mind, I am tired, <coughs> alone and cold, but I know if I hold on, that nothing to do with what you believe and everything to do with your state of consciousness. It has to do with being mindful in your life. And actually that's what you're trying to do with meditation or prayer. The prayer is for you to help you be more mindful and connected and conscious. One of my favorite sayings actually is prayer doesn't change things. Prayer changes people and people change. So friends, what you are doing is learning just that. How to train yourself with a simple prayer to be mindful each day. It's just that. The last part of this is taking that piece of bittersweet and choosing to bless the world. My sister's a family physician and a number of years ago she sent me this Yale med school address 
by Dr. Don Berwick, and uh, he now runs Medicare and Medicaid. But he started his speech off to these med school students with this. He said, let me read to you this email I received on Thursday. It came from Miss Jocelyn Grzynski. She goes by Jackie. I did not know Jackie Grzynski before this time, and she gave me permission to share this email with all of you today. Here's what she wrote. Dr. Berwick. My husband was Dr. William Grzynski, a psychiatrist, for 39 years. He was admitted to the hospital after developing a cerebral bleed with a hypertensive crisis. My issue is that, is that I was denied access to my husband, except for very strict visiting four times a day for 30 minutes, and that my husband was hospitalized behind a locked door. My husband and I were very rarely separated except for work. He wanted me present in the ICU and he challenged the ICU nurse and the MD saying, she is not a visitor, she is my wife. But it made no difference. My husband was in the ICU for eight days out of his last 16 days alive and there were a lot of missed opportunities for us. Mrs. Grzynski continued, I am advocating to the hospital administration that visiting hours have to be open, especially for spouses. I do not feel that his care was individualized to meet his needs. He wanted me there more than I was able and allowed. And I feel it was a very cruel thing for you to do to us. He says, listen again to the words of Dr. Krasinski, to the hospital staff. She's not a visitor, she is my wife. Here again, Mrs. Krasinski, I feel that it was a very cruel thing that you did to us. Cruel is a powerful word, isn't it? Her email and the emails that follow the first one are without exception dignified and respectful and tempered. Why does she say cruel? We will have to imagine ourselves there. My husband and I loved each other very deeply. She writes to me and we wanted to share our last days and moments together. We both knew the gravity of his illness and my husband wanted quality of life, not quantity. Because someone stole all that dignity and respect and care or Dr. and Mrs. Brzezinski, a nameless someone, someone who put the IV first and the soul second. Of course, it isn't really someone at all. We don't even know who or what it is. Its voice sounds rational. Its words are these. It's our policy. It's against the rules. It would be a problem. And even incredibly, it is in your own best interest. Then this doctor tells a story of when he was a resident himself and was following around this other doctor. <laughs> and he walks into a room and he starts immediately going through her pieces of what is wrong with her and talking to her in very medical terms off of her chart. And his mentor says to him, Dan, ask Mrs. Wilson about her new grandson of his apricot skin and his curly black hair. Ask her that. And it is there that this physician, talking to a room full of physicians, of new graduates, gets us to blessing the world. He says, I want to celebrate this day with you. But I want you to remember that when you step into that role, with that power, you will meet Dr. and Mrs. Brzezinski over and over and over again. You will meet them every day, every hour. They will be in disguise. They will be disguised as a new mother, afraid to touch her preemie on the ventilator in the incubator, disguised as the construction worker, too embarrassed to admit that he didn't hear a word you said, but was too polite to say so disguised as the alcoholic bottoming out who was the handsome champion of their soccer team and dreamed of being an architect someday, 
disguised as the child over whom you tower, disguised as the 90-year-old grandmother over whom you tower. He finishes by saying this. How you treat those in front of you is a choice. That choice is not in the hands of a nameless power, not fated to the comfort by deaf habit, not a policy or those are the rules, just you. Your choice, your rule, your power. I've always ended reading that, getting choked up. Because for me, those words are not for the physician. They are for the librarian in this room. They are for the teenager in this room. They are for the retiree in this room. They're for Melissa and for me. Reminding us that each day, we have the ability to bless the world. So choose it. Go to that wellspring that you have. It is both good and bad. And choose to bless. I invite you in our silence together. Put your hands out as an offering. And decide just how today you will bless them. May I suggest, may I suggest to you, may I suggest this is the best part of your life. May I suggest this time is blessed for you. This time is blessed and shining almost blinding bright. Just turn your head and you'll begin to the thousand reasons that were just beyond your sight. The reason why, why I suggest to you, why I suggest this is the best part of your life. There is a world that's been addressed to you, addressed to you, intended only for secret world, a treasure chest to you, a private scenes and brilliant dreams that mesmerize. A tender lover's smile, a tiny baby's hands, the million stars that fill the turning sky at night. Oh, I suggest, yes, just to you. Yes, I suggest this is the best part of your life. There is a hope that's been expressed to you. The hope of seven generations, maybe more. This is the faith that they invest in you. Is that you'll do one better Join us for worship every Sunday at 10 a.m. at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Canandaigua, a welcoming congregation. We are located at 3024 Cooley Road, four miles west of South Main Street, Canandaigua, just north of the intersection with routes 5 and 20. Look for the blue signs just before the turn. Your comments about this program or questions about the church are welcome at 585 three nine six one three seven O or at our website ww dot org Producer and Editor Daniel Brigham